Greetings, Herpers. I'm Rich Lund, and I'm on a Herp Quest today. So, about a week ago, I was doing my normal jog, saw this path in the woods that I've sometimes taken, got a couple routes around here, and there's some kind of boarded up houses, and I'm not all for uh, exploring abandoned buildings or anything, but I did see some boards lying nearby the house, and I couldn't help but realize, hey, that's a place where some snakes would love to get out of the sunlight. So I checked it out, and on that day, there was five garter snakes just sitting under there, chilling out. Since then, I have come back every sunny day, and there hasn't been any. But here I am again. This is actually my fourth time now with the camera, and uh, we're going to see if they're under there. I hope. If they're not, I'll still probably come back tomorrow if it's sunny. I'm going to find these garter snakes. All right, let's have a look. When you go to lift up a board like this, it's a general rule to lift it away from yourself. The reason being, if there's anything hazardous underneath there, then you got a barrier between you and whatever you've uncovered. Now here in Michigan, I'm not really worried about anything like that, but it's just a good general rule. Let's see if we get lucky. And no. All right, but what about the other one? Maybe the larger one's got something better for us. Now, as you can see, I can't really do that general rule with this. It's just too large. But still, we'll be careful and lift it up and see if we get lucky. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I'm seeing two right there. Oh, let's just put it down for a second. Oh, oh. Okay, all right. so what I've done is I've just stepped on the tail so that way it can't move. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. If I'm going to get bit, it's going to be right now. With all garters, really, at first, they're ready to bite. But after a while, being handled, they tame right down, calm right down. They're not that likely to bite you. There they are. See the one there on the left has got a little bit of a stump for a tail. We're going to talk about that in a second. Thamnophis sertalis. This is the common garter snake. This is the most common snake in all of North America, just like the name sounds, common garter snake. And I can tell also from the eye caps of these two, both of them have eye caps that are glazed over. They're going to shed in about a day or two, maybe three. Oh, in fact, some of its skin is shedding already a little bit right there. About time to shed. The coloration for this species is quite variable. This one looks kind of like a, a brownish color with some olive stripes, but you can also have them be the main color instead of brown, could be very green, could be olive, could be a very dark black. The stripes themselves, they can be a yellow color, they can also be a type of brightish yellow green. They can even be white and, in some cases, even kind of like a bluish tinge green. And sometimes, and I'm seeing some on this one, there can be a little bit of like red in between the scales, in between the dorsal stripe and the side stripes. It can have alternating dark spots, which almost give it like a checkered pattern. I can see it a little bit, especially when it flexes a certain way, it scales, I can see a little bit of that checker but not too much on this one. And it could be too, the colors are a little bit muted because it's about to shed. The tongue is completely pinkish red, actually a little bit more of a red than a pink, though it can be pink sometimes, with a very black tip. Now, I hope me sitting here handling this snake lets you see that uh, these are harmless. You know, um, when it comes to what harms them, they've got lots of predators, raccoons, crows, hawks, types of birds, snapping turtles, other snakes. There's plenty that are making the world pretty rough for the common garter snake. But also roads and lawnmowers and household pets, cats and dogs out in the yard cause these guys plenty of harm. They just want to get away. That's all they want to do. And if you see any, just leave them be. 
mostly active on the very hot days during the early mornings and then at the evening and usually trying to find some sort of hide for the really hot noon hours. The primary diet of these guys are things that are rather defenseless like earthworms and slugs. Another definite source of protein for these guys are uh, amphibians, so salamanders and especially toads, the younger the better. So now, I don't know for sure, but this one's got a little stub on the end of its tail. It's missing some of its tail. There's a nematode parasite that affects these ones. Because they eat amphibians, some of these amphibians, frogs, toads, will have a parasite in them that once the snake eats, actually then parasitizes the snake's tail. And the larva come out through the tail, which kind of kills the stump of the tail. And the snake can get along just fine without that end of the tail. It doesn't really do the snake a whole lot of harm, but just, you know, kind of a shame. And so it could have been from some other, you know, predator that snapped at the tail, but usually with garter snakes of all types, that's, uh, that's the cause of that little stump tail situation. A parasite got it. But see, this one's still healthy, doing fine. What's really interesting about garter snakes and their species, though, is that these guys will give birth to live young. There's actually plenty of snakes that do this, which really show that like, when it comes to evolution, these snakes are some cutting edge things as far as reptiles go. It mates in the spring, usually right after they come out of hibernation. They, these guys will hibernate together in dens, and right after they come out, they begin the mating. The female will send out a, a bit of a pheromone musk to let the males know where she's at. And the males will then, you know, sense that and follow her, and many males might court her all at once. And if there's a large amount of males trying to court her all at once, well, some males have actually been able to mimic the female pheromone and trick the males into thinking that that male is the female. And while those males are distracted, then that male successfully mates. Pretty interesting, if I do say so myself. All right, Thamnophis sertalis. I think they've had enough of me. So we're going to put them back under their little den, let them crawl under there themselves, and they can decide if they want to stay the night there or not. Thanks for checking this video out. Thanks for herping with me. I'm Rich Lund, and uh, just want to remind you, always leave nature as good or better than you found it.